it's TX Stampin' Sharon. Welcome to my techniques class. It is Thursday, December the 16th, and I am live at 7 o'clock p.m. Central. If you're watching the replay, I sure hope you enjoy it. I want to say hello to everyone who has uh, joined me on the live. We've been busy chatting. Um, I love the community of my lives. Um, somebody was on an hour early. <laughs> it's like, that's precious. <laughs> but it gives you a chance um, to get on and start chatting with your uh, stamping friends who are here from all over the world. And it is just so fun to have this YouTube platform that I can share some techniques with y'all and that we can meet people everywhere. It's so fun. It's so fun. We have Sandra from New Hampshire. Um, we have Georgia from Casa Grande, Arizona. I love Arizona. We lived there for six years. We lived in the southern part. I never knew that the desert could be so pretty. I was surprised. I just fell in love with it. So, and the mountains. Oh, there was mountains all around us and I loved that. Hello, Teresa from Kentucky. Jan Ross, you might be in my downline. That would be interesting. I'll have to look and see. Um, Jan and I were chatting before I went live. She is a fellow Texan. And so um, I'm from Allen, Texas is where I started my stamp business. And when I think about how I started, it surprises me that I kept going because I didn't know the first thing. You know, I, I took the stamp and I plunked it on a piece of paper and I was like, well, now what? <laughs> Um, and I have come a long way, but all of us have to start somewhere and watching YouTube videos like this one um, or any of the other ones that I share or anybody else shares helps you go from that just stamping the image on a piece of cardstock to turning it into a card that you're proud of to send. So I hope that I am inspirational to y'all when you are making your cards. Um, I'm getting ready to kick off some fun stuff in January, and I can't wait to announce it. Some things that would help beginner stampers, more intermediate stampers, and then those of you who are more advanced. Um, the techniques class that I've been sharing um, is designed to give you a reference for techniques. Some of these techniques you may already know. Some of these techniques you may have forgotten. Some of these techniques you're gonna go, I've never done that before. Um, and yes, you can certainly Google and search and research and all of that, but I've done all the work for you. If I, if I have, like I asked in the chat, what technique do y'all want to see that I haven't already showed? Because this is my third month and this will put us at 20 techniques when I'm done. And so if there is a technique that I have not showed up to this point, now I still have a long list of techniques. So don't think I need to know what else can I share because I've got a list, but I wanna share, I wanna teach y'all what you're interested in or what you wanna learn. Um, and I'll, I'll prioritize those. I'll put those up to the top of my list instead of me picking from my long list. I think I have like 80 techniques on my list. So. Um, we're going to be doing this for a while. I offered volume one in October with 10 techniques. I offered volume two in November with five. And then tonight is five. Five is a good doable number. I think five is a great number for me to do. Um, I don't keep you here all night. That first one was like an hour and a half. <laughs> um, and then you're not on overload. You're going to go, whoa, I can't remember all of that. No problem. How are you going to get these techniques? Um, I have a free tutorial to anyone who places any size order on my website during the month of December. Um, you know, it, in the previous months, it was a $50 order, but December is kind of hard. We're buying presents for others, but we want those techniques. So any size order, um, and don't forget the last chance it, um, on the mini catalog products are going away. Um, Mary Yates says that I have come a long way on my stamping. Oh, for sure. I so wish that I had my first card. If I'd have known I was gonna keep doing this for 24 years, I would have kept that card just to show y'all how bad I was, how bad I was. But 
I started going to classes and I started, you know, really trying and we didn't have YouTube back then. Nope, we didn't have YouTube. So, um, I'm just kind of reading. Oh, y'all are telling me some techniques. Okay, so Jan says she usually has problems with masking and shading. Okay, um, I have done a form of masking on a previous video, so check out those two. But I will make sure that I will go back through the comments and I will grab um, your techniques. If you're watching the replay, please comment below the video, what technique do you wanna see? And I will, like I said, move it up the list. So I want to welcome and thank my friend, Michelle Batson. She is my helper doing my lives. Um, she helps me by answering y'all's questions, um, guiding you to where you can find something. Um, the Creative 8 Fall Retreat, uh, the registration started last week. Oh, it's been a long week. Yes, last week. And so the first challenge, we do a pre-retreat challenge every week leading up to the retreat. Um, that starts December 27th. So if you want to get in on the challenges, you need to register for the retreat. You can register on my blog or um, I think Michelle will put in the chat box uh, the link to go straight to my tutorial store. And, yes, if you go to my tutorial store, you can find a lot of things. There's a lot of free things over there. I put them there so you can find them. But if you click on shop on my blog, where is my blog? There's my blog. If you click on shop and the little menu drops down, you can see register for the Creative 8 Retreat, shop for my tutorials. Um, on my shop for tutorials, I've got some free downloads that don't cost you anything. I love to share and that is just a place that I can, let's turn that off. I can share those with you. Um, Renee Paris has her first card. Okay, so I'm jealous. Um, and because I don't dare send it to anyone. Oh, I didn't send mine to anyone either. I put it in a metal tin. I can still picture the metal tin that I put my first couple of cards in. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this. I, I just don't know. I don't think I've got it in me. But I love to craft. And so I'm like, surely I can figure this out. So I think I have. Um, but I'm here to help you if you need help figuring it out. So I am going to... Partial die cutting, please. You know, I did a partial die cutting. Um, I thought about bringing that back as a technique because I did a partial die cutting in my die cutting hacks video. It is probably my most popular video here on my channel. Um, but I will, I will put that on the list. Great, great suggestion. Um, because Linda, I, I thought about it and I was like, is that really a technique? Sure, it's a technique. It's a die cutting technique, but it's a technique. So yeah, I'll be happy to do that one. So um, Rose says, I save a copy of every card I make in case I ever want to make it again. Great idea. That is a great idea. All right, we're going to go ahead and flip the cameras because I do have some things to share. First of all, if you have been a customer of mine, you will be getting these catalogs. They have been mailed via bulk mail. If you are new to my channel and you don't currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you want the new mini that starts January the 4th and the celebration brochure and the annual catalog, I'm happy to send those to you. If you click below my uh, video under the show more button, you will find how to uh, request a free catalog. Now let's talk about my techniques. Look at this wow cover I did. And I was so proud of it. Um, I took tonight's artwork and I added it to a piece of cardstock, okay? If you have not decorated your album, this is the album from Stampin' Up! that is used for scrapbooking, but we are using it for our techniques, to house our techniques. I have included this um, graphic in tonight's um, PDF tutorials so you can get it um, and trim it down however you want. I just mounted mine on Pacific Point cardstock and I just put it on. So I was so proud of it, okay? And then Donna Hain sent me an email 
Y'all have to see this in full color. With how she decorated her binder. Can y'all see that? It is a gorgeous card. So here's the spine of the album. Okay, it's in black. It's kind of hard to see. But she decorated with designer series paper and formed a pocket and then printed off my Techniques logo and tucked it in there. I was so impressed and I was like, well, now I feel like I need to stamp something. <laughs> so it looks like she has a little card and it just goes into the pocket. So here is another idea for you to decorate your binder or your album. Now, I want to talk to you because we've been adding techniques to this binder. I want to talk to you about a few things. When you purchase, so when you purchase the album, it does not come with the pages, okay? You have to purchase those separately. Um, and if I were you, I would purchase a couple of packs at a time because it comes with one sheet like this, and then it comes with others that are divided, okay? So what I decided to do, because now I'm up to volume three, tonight is volume three, I decided to just put my first one here, put my second one here, put my third one here, and then I'll put my fourth one here. Now we're gonna keep on going, so that way um, you still have a reference. You're like, okay, where's the bubble wrap technique? Okay, it was here, this is the one I wanna do, and then you could search for the bubble wrap technique, okay? So this is just something that I thought I would share with y'all. Um, and hopefully it will help you as you are putting your techniques in the binder. Okay, so where are we at for tonight? My binder's getting full, how about y'all's? I love that card, that was last month's. So, okay, here we go. Now, I wanna show you one more quick thing. This is how your sheets come in the PDF and I tell you to, I welcome you and I tell you how to print your tutorials, print them to full size so that all, everything fits in the pockets. If you want to cut it apart and put it in the technique book in the album, okay? Um, here is the artwork that I told you I was sending you. And then here is the techniques that you can cut apart. And then we're just gonna dive right into the first technique. The first technique is called watercolor pencil blending. Now, watercolor pencils have not been getting enough love lately, in my opinion. I think the Stampin' Blends have stole the show, but we've had pencils around for quite a while. So here is my card that I'm going to demonstrate, okay? Um, you do want to use stays on ink because even though we're going to be using a blending brush or a blender, blender pen, not a blender brush, you could also use water with the water painters. So anytime you're using moisture, it is very important that you use your stays on ink pad because otherwise your image will smear and you don't want that, okay? All right, the supplies that I'm using are the star-crossed embossing folder. Oh gosh, help me out, y'all. I think this retires this month. I think so. Anyway, um, I used it for my card. Let me just point that out to you so you can see the stars and the crosses right here. Let me get to the... Oh, it's so hard on the camera. There we go. We see it, okay? Okay. I am using Nature's Harvest because I love this stamp set so much. I prefer red rubber, um, but we do have the photopolymer that a lot of you do prefer. Um, but I, I'm just a red rubber gal. I don't know, I just, it's just my favorite, I think. Now, you'll notice that I have two packs of pencils here and the packaging is different. This is the more current. Um, but there is the watercolor pencils and then there's the assortment too. So there are two um, different ones that you can purchase. I tend to just grab colors from both of them all the time. So I kind of think you need both um, just to have that assortment. All right, let's clear off our space a little bit. So again, this is the watercolor 
um, pencil blending. So we're gonna get our pencils out. Let's see, and I want, nope, I think they're over here. See, I put them back kinda willy-nilly. They do have the names on the sides. So I'm looking for my yellow. Where's my yellow? There it is, Daffodil Delight. So I wanna to talk to you about sharpening your pencils. Um, those of you who may have one of those, and I have one, one of those crank pencil sharpeners, don't use those. It will chew this poor pencil up to smithereens. Go to Dollar Tree, Office Supply, whatever, and just get a cheapy school pencil that we used to send to uh, school with the kiddos. It does a beautiful job and it doesn't eat up your pencil, okay? So we're just gonna make sure that both of these are sharpened. Just a few turns and we, we should be good to go. These might be 50 cents, I don't know. But this is the kind you need to sharpen your pencils. Okay, so we're gonna get our stays on. I have pencil shavings on my, I'm using a piece of very vanilla and we're just going to ink up our flower. Stamp it right there. I will, I am happy to tell you that nature's harvest, you will see it again. It is not totally going away. It is in the mini catalog that is retiring, um, but it is not going away. Now, the key thing, especially, um, if you have a new stays on, I treated myself to a new stays on pad. Mine was probably 10 years old. You do want to make sure that it's good and dry because we talked about smearing and we talked about um, making sure that you use stays on when you're adding moisture. And we're using moisture tonight with the blender pen. I think the blender pen gives you more control and is less scary sometimes than the water. Some of you are... You know, you might be leery of the water, especially with a small design. I just realized I need another color of pencil, and I want to see if I can find it. It is my black one, but I don't always put them all back the way they're supposed to. There we go. Basic black. Um, I thought about getting one of those pencil holders and just putting it in there. <laughs> oh, we need one more color. We need our green. I'll get there eventually. Okay. All right, so we want to take our Daffodil Delight first, and we're just going to color. And I love the fact that with me doing the blending, I don't have to be so perfect with my coloring because now this image has designs in it, so it's kind of hard to tell, but I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. Hold on. We're gonna get a piece of paper. So if I just, let's take a darker color so you can see it. If I just color like this, you can kind of see the stroke marks, okay? Now for, I wanna show you what happens when you add the blender pen. It blends all those stroke marks out. Look at that, isn't that fun? Now with the blender pen, you always wanna wipe off that tip. Okay, back to our coloring. So the blender pen will help you um, so much with your watercolor pencils. How many of y'all have watercolor pencils? Do you use them or have you, you know, like I said, just started using your Stampin' Blends or your Stampin' Write markers? Um, the beauty of the pencils is that you can blend, whereas you can blend with the Stampin' Blends, um, but the pencils, the pencils are great for like, even the kiddos when they're wanting to do some coloring. Now these are watercolor pencils. These are not the colored pencils that maybe you sent to 
school with the kiddos when they needed it for art class. Um, these are these are watercolor pencils and they react with moisture. Okay. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying not to look at the chat box, but it just kills me not to. Um, Y'all say something to me. I'm just coloring, so <laughs> it's like. Tag me, do the at sign and tag my name. Say something, I wanna see what y'all are saying. I wish that I had a bigger screen on my laptop because maybe I could read a little bit better. I wanna get a darker green and I'm gonna just add that in different spots. So it's kind of a blending that I'm gonna be doing Okay, so now we're gonna take our pumpkin pie and I'm just going to color. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera. Let's see. Uh, let me see, let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go, now you can see me. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of color towards the top. I'm gonna do a little bit over here. This is kind of a tiny flower. Okay, so here is where I think the magic begins. So can y'all see the differences in color? Okay. And now we're gonna take our, move all this over. We're gonna take our blender pen uh, let's see, Einig says, I need this lesson. I have the pencils, but shy of using them. Well, then I'm so glad, Einig, that I picked this technique for you. So now I'm just blending these two colors together. When you want to change colors, like when I go to the green, um, let me get my scrap paper. Uh, Renee says, use regular color pencils and blend them with baby oil with a blending stump. I don't have a blending stump. What is a blending stump, Renee? Renee always teaches me new things. Okay, so we're just cleaning that up. And then when I'm, you wanna give your blending pen, your blender pen, time to recover. So it will stain, can y'all see the orange? Oh, I got too close to the camera. Y'all see the orange on the tip? It will stain, but well, let's see if we can wipe off some more. But when I go to use it the next time, it'll be fine, but I'm gonna switch ends and I wanna try to pull in. I don't think I, I, don't think I got a contrast of greens dark enough. The greens aren't showing up as much, but I think you get the gist of just blending those pencils and remember this over here where you can just scribble, scribble, scribble. Let's take another green. And blend those greens together. More of an ombre. Have fun with your pencils, guys. They're fun. I think I hope this helps you, my friend. Okay. So you can, oops, we didn't finish our black. Where's our black? Basic black. I decided, oh, and I wanna show you another thing. Let's just color these black, these are, Lazy, what are they? Not Lazy Susan. Black Eyed Susan. I was like, not Lazy Susan, what is that? Ah, oh, that should probably be green. But when you add, so see how that kind of looks, I don't know if y'all can see it. It kind of looks gray, but when I add the blender pen, it darkens it up some. Okay, 
Do you refill the blender pen or just buy a new one? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to buy a new one when it dries out. Um, I have had these for years, years. I finally threw away the, so they come in a pack of three. Um, I threw away one of them. These will last you a long time. So they do come in a pack of three. And like I said, just alternate ends whenever you're changing colors. Um, but I promise you, they will last a long time. Now I have heard of people filling them, but there's no holes to fill, okay? And as long as you store these flat in a drawer, don't store them in a pencil holder. Store pens, markers, um, blending pens, everything flat uh, so that one end doesn't get dried out, one end doesn't get too juicy, and they will last you a long time. Great question. Um, they are lightly rolled paper in a pencil shape, creating, smudge creating shape. Oh, the, um, okay. Okay, I think I have seen those, but I don't have one. But thank you, Renee, with baby oil. Okay, all right, let's get our next technique out. Our next technique is the baby wipe ink pad. I have shown this recently. However, I wanna make sure that y'all know about it. You may remember seeing this card right here. Um, I did this one a couple of months back, but tonight I'm using Gorgeous Leaves and we're gonna make this card. Okay, I forgot I zoomed my camera in. So the things that you need for the baby wipe technique, of course we need our paper, we need a stamp. We need some ink refills. I have chosen Cherry Cobbler, Crushed Curry, and Old Olive. And we need some baby wipes. Thank goodness I have a grandbaby. Um, but you know, you know, when I first started stamping, <clears throat> um, we all tried different techniques. Some crazy ones, not gonna lie. Um, but when we were doing the baby wipe technique back then, they were thicker wipes than they are today. So I have found that you want four of them and we're going to fold them over. Let's put them on our plate. You do wanna protect your surface. We're gonna fold them in half and we're gonna fold them again. So that's four layers, right? It works really well when you're making your own stamp pad to have eight layers. Okay, so there's six, and now here is number eight. Okay. So when you are doing your ink refills, I recommend no more than three colors um, because it can get muddied if you choose more than three colors, um, but you could do two colors if you wanted to. You want to make sure, this is a huge tip, don't just touch the um, reinker to the baby wipe. You want to squeeze. Okay, we are squeezing into, can y'all hear the jingle bells behind me? <laughs> that is my grand dog. And I don't know what he's doing, but he has a bell on him. Um, I think he's trying to get snuggled in the blanket. My poor grand dog, guys, he had seizures he had two seizures right before Thanksgiving, and so now we have to put a bell on him in case he has a seizure. We need to make sure. So I can't quite get used to the jingle bells, but um, better safe than sorry. Now, who said that stamping isn't messy? We're going to try to get this off so that we don't make a mess everywhere. I'm going to just spritz some Stampin' Mist. I'm just spritzing the mist on my finger. Um, I could have grabbed my alcohol, but that was kind of a big blob of ink. All right, so now we're doing our green. And we're just connecting the dots. The big tip for tonight is to make sure that you're going to be making several cards because we just used our ink to make our own ink pad. 
Um, I know, Vey. It makes me so sad. He's been, he's such a good dog. Um, and so it's just kind of sad. My sweet little Mowgli. All right, so now my camera is zoomed in too much, but I, wanted, I want y'all to see what I'm doing. Uh, we're gonna have to zoom out, aren't we? Hold on, let's zoom back out. Whoops, wrong way. There we go, okay. All right, so we're just going to ink this up just like it's a stamp pad. And we're gonna move it around so that our leaves are different colors. And I just love this technique. This has been around for a long time, but it's so fun. Okay, so remember, make a bunch of cards when you're doing this technique because we've had this, this ink pad and it is going to dry out. So if you come back tomorrow, it's over. Can't make any more cards. Let me show you my finished card again. Okay, so that is the baby wipe technique. So easy, so simple, so fun. Okay. What do we have next? Ah, we have the double embossed enamel. So fun. Bring me on the copper. So, can y'all see the enamel effect and the embossed layer? Okay. So, I am using the Parisian uh, 3D, a uh, Parisian Flourish 3D embossing folder, Versamark ink. My stamp set was Color and Contour. Oh, I didn't show, yeah, I did show you all the other stamp. My stamp set was Color and Contour. So we have our heat gun, got that ready. And we are going to ink up the top part so this is the top part of our embossing folder. That will be great for my grandkids to do, says Renee. Yes, it would. The baby wipe technique would be so fun for the kids because they can't mess it up. It's kind of a goof proof technique. Y'all saw how I stamped over it and it didn't matter. It still turned out cute. All right, so we need our cardstock. Now, in the past, we would use our embossing buddy. However, I really, on this technique, I don't think you really have to. Um, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell the Embossing Buddy anymore, but I still use it. I think I'm just a creature of habit. But um, So we don't want our emboss, our Versamark to stick, or our embossing powder to stick where we don't want it to. Now I'm just going to line this up, and I'm, when I close it up, you'll see. I like to line things up with that line on the Stampin' Up! Embossing folder. There's a black line right there. So I like to do that. Let's grab our machine. We have our stamp and cut and emboss machine. You know, <laughs> I've had a lot of die cutting machines, but I'm telling you, sometimes you just need the helpful tips guide that is on this base plate of this thing. So it told me I needed to use the plate number four for a thick embossing folder. Now, those of you who have watched me do die cutting on a video, y'all know that my table is tall and it is very hard to do, but I did it. I did it for y'all. <laughs> Okay, so 
So now we have that. If y'all are on my Facebook page, you saw my nice, neat, tidy area where I was all ready for y'all tonight. I'm going to take another picture. Um, oh, Delina asked, are the blender pens only used with colored pencils? Um, no, you can use those with the pastels. Oh, I should add that to the technique list. Um, the blender pens are great for ink refills um, or you know how, um, do I have a stamp? I don't have a stamp pad here. You know how when you take your stamp, hold on. <laughs> I'm not stamping tonight. If you take your stamp pad, I like to do it this way, and squeeze it, you will get a little bit of ink right there. You can take your blender pen, and this is great if you need a watercolored um, marker and you don't have one. You know, to buy everything is a lot, and so it takes us time to build up our stash. But this can become a shaded spruce marker very easily. Let's get our scrap. So see how it's picking up that color? And now I have a shaded spruce marker. Great question. Thanks, Michelle. You just always wanna keep squiggling it to get that tip as clean as you can. Where'd my lid go? Okay, I took it off. There it is. <laughs> I have a small area to work with, but you know what? I still lose things. All right, so we're gonna take our embossed layer now. Let's move this out of the way. And we're gonna move this out of the way. And now I'm going to pour embossing powder. And I, whenever there's a lot of detail, I like to, let's see if I can do it where y'all can see. I like to tap it so that all that powder gets down in the crevices of my embossed layer. I don't know, does it matter? I don't know, but it's just, it's what I do. Okay, let's get a little bit more over here. That is the little dog Stella bossing the big dogs around. She does that really well. You're so welcome, Delina. Okay, so I am going to grab something really quick here. I really wanna protect my work surface so now I'm going to, uh-oh, I got my finger in that. Hold on, let's fix it. Saw a big white blob. And now I'm gonna heat set this. Oh, let's bring the camera in a little bit more. Y'all need to see this. I love this part.
How was that for your watching entertainment? <laughs> you always want to make sure that there's no powdery look to your embossing when you wanna do it. You wanna make sure all that powder melted. So this is the double embossed enamel look. I think it's gorgeous. Therefore, when I did my card, I didn't wanna hide it. So I put just a little sentiment right here because I think you're absolutely amazing, y'all. <clears throat> okay, next technique. Oh boy, here we go. This is a fun one. This is called the Wax Paper Batik Background. Okay, we're gonna need our little friend again. And I have done several examples to show you some differences. So wax paper from the kitchen. This thing doesn't really stay in the kitchen that much. It's usually in my craft room. Um, but just a piece of wax paper, okay? All right, and I tore it to about this little bit bigger than a card. And remember our Parisian, uh, 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 Parisian Flourish embossing folder. I knew that I was gonna use this folder twice tonight, so I went ahead and I embossed my piece of wax paper. Okay, so you can see the design. Um, this folder now has Versamark on it, and with me being live, I wouldn't have time to clean it properly, so that's why I decided to emboss my wax paper first. Um, Oh, thank you, Carol. I'm glad you liked the um, embossed enamel, double embossed enamel card. Oh, I don't need that stamp pad. I have a piece of uh, copy paper, okay? So we're gonna need that. And I have two pieces of basic white cardstock because what we're gonna do is we're going to sandwich our wax paper in between those two pieces of basic wet. And then we're going to tuck it inside of our um, copy paper. And you can see from my piece of chipboard where I have been playing, um, the wax is going to come out. And so I'm just protecting all of my surface. I'm showing you everything to remind you to protect your surface, okay? Y'all got it? All right. Uh-oh, that did not get hot. Come on, what happened to my iron? You gotta be kidding. Y'all see the iron, right? I turned it on before we went live and it went cold on me. Come on. Okay, it's waking up, goodness gracious. All right, while we're waiting for that to wake up, let me show you some examples. So what if you used a different embossing folder? Okay, this is the musical note. This is the one in, um, oh, Michelle's asking me a question. It has been asked if you could move the camera out some. Yes, I can. There we go. How's that? Now you can see my iron. Um, I too have wax paper in my craft room right next to the aluminum foil and press and seal, which works great keeping small pieces together, small dyed pieces together. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So, yep, we're getting there. What if I wanted to use a different folder? I could. What about this one? Yep, I could. All right, now that my iron is hot, I'm gonna go ahead and do the ironing. And we're just gonna go over it a few times. We're just melting the wax paper onto our basic white cardstock. You just wanna make sure that you're doing the whole piece of cardstock, all right? You don't wanna have part of it not get melted. So I'm just doing that. Okay, that should do it. And 
then, of course, it's warm, so we want to make sure we don't burn ourselves. I'm going to move this over. Boy, what a mess I have. So then, when you take it out, you're going to flip, okay? Because this has the wax, this was on the wax paper side. So you're going to flip that one, and you're going to leave that one face up, okay? Now, our wax paper is pretty thin. I need, we're just going to do this. We're gonna set that out of the way. And we're gonna get our blending brush. I love my blending brushes. And I'm using Gorgeous Grape. And we're going to add some ink. You could use a sponge, you could use a sponge dauber, um, just whatever device, you could use a brayer if you have a brayer. And so we're just going to start adding and what's so fun about this is it's not, how do I say it? It's not a bold in your face design, hence the batik look. Can y'all see it coming together? Y'all see it? Um, I love it for the subtleness of a background. Yes, I could have inked up my embossing folder, ran it through, and had an embossed layer. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you just want the effect of your embossing folder? Um, this is perfect. I think it's beautiful. And I'm going to show you some other ideas. So this is an oldie. Okay, so there's that one. And now remember this one, this was our other piece. We're gonna do the same thing. And it's gonna be a lot more subtle because it was the de-embossed side of our wax paper. So our embossed side and our de-embossed. But this is a great way to make two cards at one time. with one piece of wax paper. Isn't that pretty? Now I got a little globby over here with my ink, but blend that out a little bit. Okay, so there's my two examples. That is the embossed, nope, the, um, I used my paper. That is the wax paper batik background. Now let me show you. I showed you this folder. This does it very subtle, very subtle, because if you'll see, there's a lot of white space in this folder. The music note is a lot more detailed, okay? And I just think it's so pretty, especially when you finish your card. You know, if I had just put the flower and the leaves on a piece of wax, it would still be pretty, but I think the batik look just gives it so much depth. What do y'all think about the batik look? Um, you can start a section on your channel called How We Did Things Way Back When. <laughs> this would be on that part of my channel. How we used to do things. I really should try. Um, we did a technique using Eagle Brand Milk and we stamped with it and heated it. I should try that just for old time's sake because that was funny. I did use Hydrangea Haven for that stamp, uh, for that card. Oh, let me show you some something else. What if you want to add colors to it? That turned out pretty. Here's my other piece that I didn't use. But yeah, just adding your color gives it a totally different look. 
than if it's all one solid color. Okay. Okay, what do we have next? Now, this one is super simple. If you're one of my mystery stampers, you already know this, but it has to go in your technique binder, I promise. Embossed designer series paper. And what's so fun about it is designer series paper is really thin. Run two pieces at the same time through the folder, okay? So, again, we're going to use, and you know, sometimes on the back of the designer series paper, it's like, I don't want, that's too busy for my card, but I wanna use this one, but mm, can I do something to it? Absolutely. Look at me doing the big shot. I'm the big shot. The stamping, cutting, and boss twice. Some habits don't die. <laughs> so we're gonna run this through again. I don't know if I grew taller or what. This is getting easier. How about that? Can y'all see it on the camera? I hope so. Let me turn it, there we go. You can definitely see it on the bumblebee, um, but look at that, isn't that pretty? All right, let me show you my card. Uh, catching the camera so that you see the embossing. There we go. Okay, the stamp set I used was Pansy Patch. Super easy, but y'all need that one in your binder, I'm telling you. Okay, have I done them all? Oh, that was quick if I did. Let's see. Yep, we did them all. I'm just gonna double check because that seems awfully quick. We did the wax paper, we did the double emboss. Yep, we're done. We are done. Okay. What do y'all think about tonight's techniques? Let me get my laptop over here. Okay, let's do this and this. There we go, I'm back. Yay! Um, Tina says, LOL, the marble technique you showed a while back. I should do the marble technique, shouldn't I? It needs to go in your book. I will bring back the rubber band, the marble, the faux terry. You got it, it's on the list. <laughs> I think I blew y'all's minds when I did the marble technique. That's one of those that would go on that part of my channel that's like, this is what we used to do. But another great one for the kids, let those kids roll those marbles around. Um, <laughs> Michelle is talking about her crafting problem. Um, Claudette says she loved it. She learned a lot. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, H.J. Burton says the wax boutique technique is very pretty. All of these have been really fun tonight. Thanks a lot for a fun evening. I'm so glad y'all had fun. Uh, Barbara Reynolds says these techniques are great. I look forward to these sessions all the time. Thank you, TX Stamp and Sharon. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Yay, you guys are loving it. And Mary Yates says there are many that she hadn't seen. I bet the, the wax paper batik one was one. Um, you're so welcome, Connie. Brenda says, love them all. The wax paper is my favorite. Merry Christmas. Okay, uh, Ina says that I hit a home run tonight. Thank you so much. My love is to share and help y'all. So I hope tonight was helpful. I hope it inspired you. I hope that you enjoy this technique series that I started. It is a dream that I've had for a long time to put it together and, and share it with y'all. So um, I hope that, thank you, Brooke. I'm so glad you love tonight's event. Kay Strom says, great reminders of things that we did early on. 
See, Kay's on my page. She knows me, she's got me. The techniques will be available for um, purchase right after tonight's live about eight o'clock, 8.05. Um, oh gosh, I forgot I had myself over on the other <laughs> computer. You know, me and technology, it, it's just so fun. I was having trouble getting my laptop started. I was like, oh gosh, do I have to use my big desktop? And anyway, y'all don't need to hear all that. The techniques will be available for purchase. If you want to purchase them, they're $15. Um, they will be on my store. Uh, you can look at the link below the video or www.txstampin.com. We'll put that up one more time. Go to the shop button and go to the tutorials and you'll see that go live um, about eight o'clock, 8.05. Give me a few minutes. I gotta finish push pushing buttons. Tonight's blog post will have this video in it and as well as the cards that you saw. If you place an order this month at eight o'clock, you'll be getting an email that's already set to go with your free download. My team members get those for free, so they'll also be getting theirs tonight as well. So, um, Merry Christmas, Renee. Merry Christmas to all of you. This is the last time I will see you this year. I will be back in January. Um, my husband and I are going to Fredericksburg tomorrow. I've always wanted to go to this little German town that decorates beautifully for the holidays, um, but it's supposed to be bad weather. Siri told me on my watch, it's not looking too good, but we'll still have fun. We'll get to look at the Christmas lights. And so I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. I hope that um, everybody comes back to my channel back in, in January. Uh, let's see. Carol says, all of these were new for me except for the baby wipe technique. These sessions are so much fun. Thank you and Merry Christmas. I'm so glad, Carol. You're so welcome. Diane says, wishing everyone out there a very Merry Christmas filled with so many blessings. And we'll see y'all next year. I couldn't have said it myself any better, Diane. Thank you. Have a great evening, guys. And I will see you next year. Happy stamping, y'all.